Hello, hello. Okay, let's get that started. Let's get this party started. Hello, hello. It's who is that? Good heavens. It is Kitty, your ADHD spokes cat, coming to you from picturesque Atlanta, Canada uh, on Friday, April 2nd. Now, why it, and it's a gray, gloomy day here. Uh, it being Good Friday. Now, a little funny thing. Hello. Uh, funny. I don't know if it's funny or not, but it just kind of goes to show you how our childhood can um, shape us, if you will. Now, growing up in Atlanta, Canada, of course, it tends to be gray here a lot anyway. And for most of my, most of my time growing up, especially I remember between the ages of approximately 7 and 11, somehow it always managed to be a gray rainy day on Good Friday and a sunny day on Easter Sunday. Now of course I was too young to understand about weather patterns and stuff like that. Hello, hello, Michael! I may have to resort to the glasses. Um, oh, what is with the lighting? Oh God. It's good enough, Kitty. It's good enough. It changes. I love living in an atrium. <laughs> I'm grateful to live in an atrium. Um, so anywho, I was too young to understand about weather patterns, but being raised by nuns, all my childhood brain could understand was, it's Good Friday, it's because uh, uh, the world, God is depressed because Jesus died, and so of course it's great. And I remember even a couple of years ago, it was a sunny day on Good Friday, and I was weirded out, and that is some 40 years later. Hmm? Okay, maybe a little bit longer. Hello, hello, Aubrey. All right, so let's say, hail, hail, the gang's all here. Ah, uh, so, I'm not sure about this jacket. I like the white one better, but the black seemed to be a little bit more appropriate. All right, so this week, uh, Thank you for joining, by the way, and good morning to you, Aubrey. All right, uh, we got a lot to cover today, so I'm just going to get right to it. Speaking of OBS, the OBSosaurus. <laughs> All right, this week we're doing Ask Me Anything, and I got some really, really cool questions, for which I thank you. I think we're going to do this again, maybe uh, in a in a month or two. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Boy, I've got a lot of cool stuff to come up with. Aubrey asked on Monday, what got you into the decluttering business? Basically, it was an evolution. I just uh, probably um, stemming, I just want to make sure I don't trip over this cord. <laughs> yeah, we're having a good day. We don't want to trip over cords. All <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, probably part of my autism was kicking, kicking in during my 18 years of uh, of various forms of cleaning business and I just found myself uh, and I I wanting to rearrange people's furniture not particularly caring if it was clean well no that's I mean I clean with a toothpick cleaned up with a toothpick <laughs> for other people anyway so it just kind of evolved from from cleaning to to in-person staging to virtual decluttering to where we're at now which is helping my fellow ADHDers banish their physical and mental clutter so that they can crush it in the boredom they can crush it in the bedroom and beyond ah so that's so that's where we were oh okay thank you Michael I appreciate that it was going to be a black shirt, but it's covered with cat hair. But um, bum uh, <laughs> no joke. Uh, all right. So on Tuesday, we talked with Becky and Becky Hopkins in the Declutter the Brain Facebook group, I am, and she asked, "Which comes first, mental or physical clutter?" And I'm getting to be uh, more and more thoughts on this. Used to be, you know, it starts. Usually, I always start. Uh, it starts between the ears. And that's true, except a podcast I did with Eric Tibbers on Tuesday, we were talking about, well, you know, um, if you, it got me to thinking that if I am feeling mentally cluttered, then I'll do a little bit of physical decluttering. Yes, on the kitchen counter I always talk about. And I feel better. But 
as the week goes by, I do notice that that counter is, starts to get cluttered, which I only think is um, part of the mental clutter that's starting to accumulate. Hey, you can only keep up with so much, am I right? Uh, well, maybe you can. <laughs> I can't. And on Wednesday, Pam asked about when did you first discover feng shui and uh, what attracted you to it? I've always been um, uh, interested in, I think the word is esoteric. I keep meaning to look it up and I keep forgetting. Eh, do you ever forget things? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Uh, I will put it in the comments below if you ever forget things. Oh my god, okay, Facebook is getting flooded. All right, um, so I have always been interested in that kind of stuff, and uh, about five years ago, I don't have the book here today. Scroll back to yesterday's video and you'll see it. David Daniel, hello, Pam! Uh, David Daniel Kennedy had written a Feng Shui for Dummies book. And I picked it up. I was miserable in my own place. I didn't know that you could be miserable no, wherever, you, wherever you live. Oh boy, have I changed. Um, and I applied some of the principles. I reached out to him and it has started. Uh, he reached back. He gave me a, vir a series of virtual consultations, which is why I can do that for you now because I was originally taught way back when from somebody that... <laughs> I think he was just starting out then too, but he did a good job. Yesterday, Sarah asked, uh, what was your why for moving to Atlanta, Canada? And normally I keep personal questions at bay, but in this case, uh, sorry, <laughs> easily distracted. So, uh, Sarah made a good point about uh, what is your why now at that particular time, uh, 2012, the I was in the tour, in a tourist town and the economy was kind of tanking and my father said, why don't you move out here, cross country, 5,000 miles, thank you very much. And so I carted up the cat, two duffel bags, sent the rest by Greyhound and nine years later, uh, I found a lot of whys. I didn't actually have a why then. My why then was well, fresh start, university town, maybe I can start up another restaurant. Never did. Uh, and that's okay because I wouldn't have, uh, I don't think I would have, if I'd stayed in a tourist town, I wouldn't have been as open, as receptive to the mentors that I've had the privilege. I, in fact, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. I wouldn't be talking to Michael. I wouldn't be talking to Pam. I wouldn't be talking to, Aubrey, I wouldn't be talking to Sarah. I wouldn't know any of you. So you see how life works? What will be my why when I decide to leave? Because my work here will have been done. Plain and simple. Uh, I miss the mountains. Eh, it's just me. And I won't be that far away from you, uh, little Miss Minnesota bound. Uh, all right, so today is a really cool one. Let's make sure that we've got lots of time for this one because I love this question. Michael, our Michael asks, he asked in Facebook, in the Facebook group, uh, I'm going to kind of shorten it down a little bit. Okay, no, I've actually got the exact quote here. Because I thought it was that important. Huh? Yeah, your, your head's going to be so big, Michael, you don't fit through the door. Uh, how do you get, I'm going to quote here, how do you get over the fact that if you'd known you had ADHD and there were ways to correct it, mind you, uh, and work with it, your life would have been so much easier and you would not have totally frustrated your family and so many other people? Right. I thought that was an absolute killer question. Now, somebody in the group, they wrote a comment, you don't. And then nobody wrote a comment for quite a few hours after that. We're quite an interactive group at Declutter the Brain. And boy, once somebody, when people start to get rolling, they start to get rolling. And I looked at that and I thought, well, that's a little bit final isn't it? But I know this person and I know, I, I know where they're coming from and you know that's everybody's viewpoint is valid. This is what I want you to know that I believe. Everybody has a valid viewpoint. There is no right or wrong. 
in life and certainly it decluttered the brain. But other people, I thought, I'm going to think on this a little bit. But other group members started to pipe up like a man. And do you know what the overwhelming response was? This is very cool. Hang with me here. You're probably going to expect it, but you might not. Was, look, you can't. That's absolutely right. You can't. You can't change. You can't uh, get over the fact. But yes, you can in two ways. You just accept that and I'm going to be talking more about acceptance next week, that, you, well, you know what? There's, there's freak all that I can do about the past. There isn't anything. It was circumstances. We didn't have testing when we were uh, 40 years ago. Okay, we didn't have that. All right? But what we can do, as one young lady said, um, we can look forward to, I'm going to quote here, we can look forward to the future and all the amazing things we will do. And she quotes herself as being middle-aged. Uh, our Sarah, she says, look for, uh, no, that can't be right. Jeez. Oh, Sarah said basically the same thing. I, I made a typo here. But Sarah said basically the same thing. Look forward. There isn't anything, you know, you can't beat yourself up about the past. Every day, I wonder, and I, 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 I'm not going to say I beat myself up, but I go, why can't I just? Or everybody else must be better than me. They must be able to keep their house apple pie all the time. God help us, apple pie. Uh, mm, yum. Uh, but there isn't anything you can do about that. You can just say, well, you know what? I'm making it right now. I'm making a decision. I'm making it right. Whether it's uh, I'm deciding to um, declutter this one particular place so that I better my relationship with my with my family, or that I want to go there as as a hobby, or or whatever. Maybe a new workshop, Mister October. Hmm, I, I got ideas for you. Or uh, Sarah, with her, she's got a career change. Aubrey, look forward to the future and what you know now, all right? Because here's an important part, a very important part that I want you to think about. I think, and I'm just coming up with this now, all right? So hang with me. I believe, I believe, gotcha, that... We're lucky because of our age. We're discovering this now. And the kids who have discovered it when they're 10, when they're 20, when they're 30, they're young, they're immature. They still don't know what WTF, okay? Whereas we, we have a choice. We have a decision. We can say, yes, I am going to take this newfound knowledge and darn it all, I'm going to do a whole shitload, a, a, whole, a whole bunch about about it, all right? Or we can go, oh, what was me? Um, oh, all those years, oh well, I guess my life is over. No, no, da, 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 you're better than that. And you know that. So I really believe that we're lucky to be able to experience this at our age and be able to mentor others, all right? Celebrate our age as opposed to uh, uh, oh, shit, um, um, uh, oh, um, trashing it. Okay, that's the only word I can think of. All right, <laughs> rant over for this week. Oh my God, I'm almost out of time. Thank you so much for watching. The Our Declutter the Brain uh, 4x4 special is over at 50%. We will be offering this uh, at a different rate next week. More about that. If you haven't declutter and joined Declutter the Brain Facebook group, why not? It's educational. It's supportive. It's small enough that your voice will be heard. All right. Happy Easter. Oh, God bless you. Oh, yeah. And this is, I'm, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to go over time. I can see I'm going to go over time, but this is worth it. As far as Instagram goes, I'll just term the video.
Okay, people, we have an anniversary and I couldn't find little balloons that I could put on the thing. I have my Happy New Year decorations are, are buried. Nothing I can do about that. At the best of times, they're buried. Today is the one year, April 2nd anniversary of Monday to Friday, day, uh, Monday to Friday Facebook Lives. I did it. We're day 253, Monday to Friday, one year. One year ago, I came to the realization that my fellow ADHDers needed some sort of pick-me-up and I had zero viewers. Finally, eh, maybe three or four. And then thanks, it's just slowly been growing. Thanks to my amazing clients, amazing community. And I just wanna say a very, very warm thank you for your support over the last year. And a uh, happy Easter. Thank you for being my why. Sniffle. <laughs> All right, thank you, Aubrey. All right, guys, take care. Have a great weekend. Keep fighting the good fight. Bye for now.